Hello everyone. It is raining here in Northern Virginia, but it's a little cooler than normal. So I wanted to show you a couple of things that I got done this morning in an effort to turn this cutting garden into more of a vegetable garden and something else that I am going to try next year to get more tomatoes on my tomato plants. Okay. It's a little bit messy in here, but I want to show you, I have some leeks right here and I went ahead and planted them out. I planted them behind this Mexican sunflower right there. So I will take you around. So what I did in this patch, I planted four leeks and then in front of it, I am going to put lettuce. I'll probably do that tomorrow. And then I did the same on the other side of this Mexican sunflower. Now I'm pretty much planting these leeks for the flowers at this point. Um, I think you probably want to thin them. I did thin those leeks in another space and the rest of them that I have, I will thin as well. So I'll show you. Okay, down in here, I thinned them to one plant per spot. So those will be used for eating if they produce it's it's really really late the intention of planting any of the leeks this year was for the um, pollinators for the flowers so we'll see we'll see what happens there so bumblebee on my holy basil and then here are the other ones that i've planted out for the flowers i removed a bunch of borage i went down and cut the plant underneath the dirt and the point there is to leave the roots there to decompose in place and feed the soil. The other thing that I wanted to show you that I'm going to do next year is I'm going to take a couple natives and interplant them with my tomatoes. So this is a tall bellflower. This is a volunteer in this particular patch. And what I've noticed about the tall bellflower is that the bumblebees absolutely go crazy for this plant. They go crazy for the tall bellflower. And you know, with tomatoes, tomatoes require buzz pollination in order to produce fruit. And so with that being said, if I interplant my tall bellflower with my tomatoes. So I take these plants here and then I come over here and this is where my tomatoes will be lined up next year. Excuse the mess. I'm in the middle of a project, but if I, here is one tomato. And then what I'll do is I'll put a tall bellflower here and then I'll put a tall bellflower in between each one of my tomatoes going down the row. And that is specifically for buzz pollination. And also I really love the idea of using the natives to get that pollination to happen. Bumblebees are a fantastic pollinator. They fly earlier than other bees. They fly in lower light than other bees. They're a joy to watch because they're so funny when they're flying around because they just look so uncoordinated. But anyway, using native plants to increase pollination on my tomatoes <laughs> really makes me happy. Okay, so that's one native plant that I am going to use next year um, to increase the pollination and increase the tomatoes that I get on my tomato plants. The other one is a partridge pea. Now partridge pea is an annual and it'll self seed everywhere. Some people don't like it because they think that it's invasive or weedy. I think that the partridge peas are just absolutely gorgeous. I love them. Um, I'm happy when they pop up any, everywhere. I move them all over the yard to fill in um, spots that don't have anything. So let me show you. Let me turn the camera around and show you where I have a bunch of partridge pea right now. And unfortunately, I think because of the rain and the weather, my bumblebees aren't out. So I'm not able to show you exactly what I see on the tall bellflower and the partridge pea right now. But 
um, maybe I'll be able to take a photo when it's sunnier out and post that somewhere else. Oh, the other thing, this isn't a native, but I planted a lot of holy basil this year. The bumblebees love the holy basil and I'll be planting e way more even next year because again, the bumblebees provide that buzz pollination. So we'll be having the partridge pea, the tall bell flower, and the holy basil to really like amp up tomato production. And here are the partridge peas. Now, again, we have had massive storms this morning, last night, and so the, they're kind of falling over. I just need to stake them up a bit, but this is what the partridge peas look like. Okay, so the yellow flowers are so gorgeous and the delicate stems of, or the leaves are just beautiful. This is also a nitrogen fixer. So it is a great plant all over. Again, this is an annual. No bumblebees are out right now because it's raining, but this is going to be part of my plan to get more bumblebees on my tomato plants this next year. Even this year, I might move some of these over because these ones are all self-seeders. I do see some bumblebees out. They are definitely out on the holy basil. Okay guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. Just a couple quick topics about switching over my cutting garden into a vegetable garden and how I'm gonna amp up production on my tomatoes for next year using native plants. Plants native to here in the Piedmont area of Northern Virginia. So thank you for joining me today and I hope you join me again next time.